general recommendations would be, again, vigorous aerobic and resistance training, positive thinking and positive social interactions, orgasm for both him and her, a laughter, mindfulness. So please use it sparingly because intranasal oxytocin is a lot of power for a single individual. Vigor Steve here with part two of the Optimize Entrepreneur Nootropics deep dive video series, where we're going to discuss over-the-counter supplements to optimize and improve neurotransmission in the brain, where at the small investment of a like, a comment, preferably a couple comments, and subscribing if you haven't already, sharing this video with your entrepreneurial friends so can, they can bank after watching this video as well, watching this entire video to the end and sitting through a couple ads here and there, it will all certainly guaranteed pay off. You will bank so hard that you need a multitude of different bank accounts and a hardware, cryptocurrency wallets, and maybe some stocks and bonds, and preferably alongside of that, a high maintenance trophy wife. So all of this money that you're going to be making is well kept and well spent. In part one, we discussed cookie cutter hormone replacement therapy, right? Whether that was HRT plus or plus plus, a couple different options. We discussed neuroplasticity and neurogenesis medication. So that's the Cimax, Lank, Cerebral Lysin, perhaps selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, Nupept and other agents which are known to induce neurogenesis. We discussed the best diets for cognition. We discussed how to optimize and structure your cardio and exercise using reps in reserve. We used uh, scheduled breaks, right? Whenever you need to take a break for optimal cognitive function throughout the day, and when you need to go on holiday and take a full-blown sabbatical after you've made all of this money. I'll link the Optimized Entrepreneur Nootropics Deep Dive Part 1 video at the end of this one, and all of the deep sleep deep dives will be linked down below in the YouTube description section. Now, before we get started, even though I did my due diligence researching all of these over-the-counter supplements to improve neurotransmission and have used them myself extensively, I came to a higher truth through self-experimentation using these over-the-counter supplements either by themselves or in combination. I might still have forgotten something along the line. So if you feel that I left something out, let us know down below in the comment section your personal experience, the ideal dosage ranges, and why you feel that these particular over-the-counter supplements contribute to neurotransmission in the brain, right? We're all trying to learn as much as possible and contribute where we can. Just keep in mind that this Entrepreneur Nootropic Deep Dive video series is far from done. So yes, we'll go into the methylene blue and all of the racetams and the modafinil in part three, four, and maybe even five if this video series is doing sweet. All right, let's move over to the key neurotransmitters. There's actually a boatload of them, but no, not all contribute to motivation, productivity, sense of well-being, mood regulation, etc., which is, is what I want to narrow the scope of this video of. So we have acetylcholine, adenosine, anandamide, dopamine, endorphins, encephalins, endocannabinoids, epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, gamma amino butyric acid, glutamate, histamine, oxytocin, norepinephrine, also known as noradrenaline, serotonin, substance P, peptide YY, and vasopressin, also known as antidiuretic hormone. Keep in mind that melatonin is not a neurotransmitter, that is a neuromodulator and actually a hormone that you can take as part of hormone replacement therapy, albeit in super physiological amounts. So I listed the, all the explanations on the screen already. Um, you might have to stop the screen here and there to kind of see what the explanatory text of each neurotransmitter is. Don't worry, we'll go a lot more in depth later on in this video. Trust me. Now I want to exclude two non-relevant neurotransmitters for the scope of this video. One of them is substance P, which is a neuropeptide acting both as a neurotransmitter and neuromodulator in the central and peripheral nervous system. It plays a key role in the pain perception and the transmission of pain signals. And vasopressin, antidiuretic hormone, is, uh, regulates water balance, obviously blood pressure, and uh, contributes to social behaviors. But we're already going to go into endorphins and oxytocin, so we're going to exclude substance P and vasopressin from this video. Before we get into the motivation and productivity neurotransmitters, I briefly want to highlight and mention the mood and relaxation neurotransmitters because I'm of the firm belief that a happy brain that's always relaxed and always in a good mood perpetually is a very productive brain that's always very 
motivated. So um, the classifying neurotransmitters to mood and relaxation, we can go over adenosine, which we're looking to block. Uh, so we're going to discuss that in the motivation and productivity neurotransmitter section of this video. Uh, we're going to discuss endorphins and encephalins, endocannabinoids and anandamides, and GABA aminobutyric acid. And of course, serotonin is the key neurotransmitter when it comes to mood regulation and relaxation, but I feel that serotonin neurotransmission is worthy of a deep dive, so I'm going to discuss that extensively in the motivation and the productivity part of this video. So let's just proceed to endorphins and encephalins. Endorphins are basically, as the name implies, endogenous morphine produced in the pituitary gland and it's generally released in response to stress, pain and discomfort, but also after strenuous exercise. And encephalins belong to the endorphin superfamily, also act as endogenous opioids, but are primarily binding to the delta opioid receptor and to a lesser extent the mu opioid receptors in the brain and spinal cord, whereas endorphins act in the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system and activate and bind to the mu, delta, and kappa opioid receptor, contributing to happiness and euphoria, especially if levels are extremely high. Now, you can't get endorphins or encephalins from dietary sources. Oh, and before you ask, the answer is no. Heart pass, exogenous morphine, or heroin are not a good way to activate the opioid receptors. That's not entrepreneurial approved, okay? Symptoms of low endorphins include increased sensitivity to pain, mood disturbances, reduced stress resilience, depression, and chronic pain. And high endorphin levels uh, offer pain relief, obviously, induce happiness, and a good sense of well-being. Whereas excessive endorphin symptoms can include euphoria and addiction-like behavior, especially if oxytocin levels and dopamine levels are chronically elevated. So we're not looking to raise um, endorphin and encephalin levels chronically. We're just trying to have little pulses here and there to uh, basically get us through the day and make us feel happy, go lucky. So here are some general recommendations to optimize and balance your endorphin and encephalin levels in the body and in the brain. Vigorous aerobic and resistance training, laughter, music, socializing, even spicy food can release endorphins, particularly capsaicin, dark chocolate, sunlight exposure, massage, acupuncture, aromatherapy, deep breathing meditation, even hot saunas and cold exposure, as well as adequate vitamin B6, P5, P, peroxidyl 5 phosphate, vitamin B9 folate, vitamin B12 cobalamin, magnesium, zinc, and iron intake, because all of these uh, micronutrients contribute to normal and healthy neurotransmitter synthesis and levels in the brain. So these will make a common appearance as we go down all of the neurotransmitters, because again, vitamin B6, B9, B12, magnesium, zinc, and iron all contribute to neurotransmitter synthesis. Moving over to endocannabinoids and anandamides. As the name implies, endocannabinoids are produced endogenously, naturally within the body, and they contribute to mood regulation, appetite management, and pain modulation. Endocannabinoid specifically modulates neurotransmission release by activating cannabinoid receptors type 1 in the brain and spinal cords, and cannabinoids receptor type 2 are found in immune cells and the central nervous system. Anandamide is one of those endocannabinoids that particularly influences appetite, sleep, and pain perception. Just keep in mind that there's no direct dietary sources for endocannabinoids, and anandamide for that matter. But there are several ways to support the endocannabinoid system and potentially enhance anandamide levels within the brain. Now, before you ask, you know what? Let's go down this route. Steve, what about wheat, marijuana, cannabidiol, oil, or other CBD products? And while these might interact with the CB1 and CB2 receptors in the brain, inducing endocannabinoid-like effects, it's not exactly bioidentical comparing endocannabinoids to the cannabinoids found in wheat marijuana and CBD product, right? Your mileage may vary. Some people respond very well to exogenous cannabinoids coming from wheat or CBD products. But I will tell you from firsthand experience, myself growing up in Holland and now living in Thailand, where uh, wheat and uh, CBD products are legal, most entrepreneurs don't really use those kinds of products and rely on endogenously produced cannabinoids uh, for the majority of the day. Now, if you want to smoke some weed over the weekend and it doesn't kill your productivity for the couple days afterwards, so be it, right? Everybody has individual response. 
if you perform well smoking weed or using CBD products, um, please do so, right? Go ahead. If you feel inspired and highly motivated and highly productive, smoking a little bit of weed here and there, feel free to do so. But personally, I would vote against it. Symptoms of endocannabinoid imbalance include mood disorders, increased pain perception and appetite disturbances. Symptoms of low anandamide levels include anxiety, depression, impaired stress or mood management. But high anandamide uh, symptoms include a reduced stress, improved mood and pain relief. So again, if you suffer from any of this and you can't get um, sufficient amounts of uh, pain management through endogenously produced endocannabinoids, um, then maybe marijuana or CBD products is something you could look into, right? But that's false beyond the scope of this video. So general recommendations to upregulate and optimize your endocannabinoid system are as follows. Vigorous aerobic and resistance training, reducing stress from outside sources or general stress management, following a healthy diet, uh, focusing on your gut microbiome, probiotic supplements, omega-3 fatty acids, uh, turmeric or curcumin extracts, dark chocolate, echinacea extract or echinacea extract, which supports the immune system and contains compounds that inhibit the breakdown of anandamide and can thus increase anandamide levels within the brain. Um, black truffles are known to enhance the endocannabinoid system and adequate vitamin B6, B5, P, B9, B12, magnesium, zinc, and iron intake, obviously for neurotransmitter synthesis. And even there's some uh, limited scientific evidence that perhaps moderate alcohol, alcohol consumption can enhance the endocannabinoid system. And of course, well, there's always a marijuana and cannabidiol oil or other products as an alternative. Moving over to gamma immunobutric acid, which is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter of the body, kind of downregulates and inhibits the effect of glutamate, which we're going to get into in the productivity and motivation part of this video. So a GABA uh, uh, contributes to relaxation, stress reduction, sleep modulation, and overall balance between all of the neurotransmitters in the brain. And again, when a GABA binds to the GABA A receptors, it inhibits the effects of glutamate. Now, while there's no real direct dietary sources for gamma amino butyric acid, it's very important to understand and know that GABA is synthesized from glutamate by the glutamate decarboxylase enzymes. Of course, you can uh, enhance glutamate production from dietary glutamine, but we'll get into that a little bit later in the glutamate section of this video. Glutamine can be acquired from meat, poultry, fish, dairy products, eggs, legumes, nuts, seeds, whole grains, and some vegetables. Also important to know the benzodiazepines, non-benzodiazepine GABA-A receptor agonists and barbiturates activate the GABA-A receptors and inhibit the excitatory effects of glutamate. But there are not sustainable, good ways to improve cognition, motivation and overall entrepreneurship because benzodiazepines and the later are kind of addictive. So again, um, I would avoid those at all costs, including anticonvulsants, which might enhance the effects of GABA in the brain as well. Symptoms of low GABA levels are anxiety, restlessness, insomnia, racing thoughts, and even epilepsy. And symptoms of high GABA levels are uh, sedation, drowsiness, muscle weakness, and cognitive impairment. So we're just trying to optimize the GABA levels within the brain, uh, allowing us to have a good night's sleep. But I already covered this extensively in the Deep Sleep Deep Dive video series, which I linked down below. Here are some general recommendations to optimize and balance GABAergic neurotransmission within the brain, vigorous aerobic and resistance training, reducing stress, focusing on a healthy diet and gut microbiome, eating some fermented food with your diet, like yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, miso, or tempeh, which contributes to glutamate synthesis, which ultimately uh, provides a building block for gamma amino butyric acid. Of course, adequate vitamin B6, B9, B12, magnesium, zinc, and iron intake. You can supplement with melatonin, taurine, and L-theanine, which helps with the GABAergic signaling and overall GABA production, and limiting caffeine intake, which blocks the adenosine receptors, more on that later, and can kind of offset the inhibitory effect that GABA usually has when it's released later on in life or when you supplement with GABA um, to improve sleep quality. And of course, there's always GABA supplementation, right? 250 milligrams to 3000 milligrams before bed. And there's even GABA pentin, fenibut, and even GHB. But uh, let's leave that off the menu because again, that's probably not entrepreneurship approved. 
Moving over to oxytocin, which is a hormone and neurotransmitter that plays a key role in social bonding, trust, stress reduction, but most importantly, regulating your libido. Now, the funny thing about oxytocin is that you can't really stimulate the release with over-the-counter supplements or medication for that matter, or um, regulating your other neurotransmitters. You solely have to rely on physical activity. So that's hugging or positive social interactions, intercourse, orgasm, childbirth, right? In all those instances, oxytocin is released to contribute to emotional connections, maternal behavior, and overall social well-being. Now, vasopressin contributes to social behavior to a certain extent, including the release of endorphins. So this is pretty much all interconnected. Oxytocin is primarily produced in the hypothalamus and then transports across the nerve fibers to the pituitary gland where it's stored until it's needed at a later point in time. Keep in mind that there's no direct dietary sources for oxytocin as well. But if you're in a relationship or you have a very high social status with a lot of positive social interactions, then you can positively increase and balance your oxytocin system. And if that's not sufficient, well, there's intranasal and intravenous formulations which contain um, you know, bioidentical oxytocin as well. Symptoms of low oxytocin are a difficulty bonding, social anxiety, and overall relationship issues. High oxytocin symptoms include overattachment, obsessive behavior, and in inappropriate bonding. So again, we're just trying to balance our overall, overall oxytocin system in the brain. General recommendations would be, again, vigorous aerobic and resistance training, positive thinking and positive social interactions, physical touch, expressing affections to your partner, childbirth and breastfeeding, which is not very relevant to me and probably not very relevant for you, but for the few token females out there on this YouTube channel watching, uh, childbirth and breastfeeding will certainly raise your oxytocin levels to the max. Uh, orgasm for both him and her is known to increase oxytocin levels. Uh, laughter, mindfulness, even meditation can um, balance and optimize oxytocin levels. And then again, there's always oxytocin supplementation, 10 IUs to 50 IUs intranasally, uh, let's say one hour before intercourse, or even strenuous workouts to make those workouts a lot more enjoyable, but I would limit it to maybe two or three times weekly because there seems to be some sort of tolerance buildup. And then before you know it, you're on 100 to 200 uh, IUs intranasal oxytocin. And at one point it won't even work anymore. So please use it sparingly because intranasal oxytocin is a lot of power for a single individual. All right, so um, adenosine and serotonin obviously also fall within mood and relaxation neurotransmitters, but we're going to go um, a lot more in depth into the segment about motivation and productivity. All right, you know what, guys? Let's wrap it up here because after doing the pre-edit for part two of the Entrepreneur Nootropics Deep Dive video, I realized that it's going to be over one half hour. So I think it's better if you split it into four different chapters this was chapter one, discussing the mood and relaxation neurotransmitters and neuromodulators. And then in chapter two of part two, discussing the motivation and productivity neurotransmitters and neuromodulators, we'll discuss in depth at length adenosine and acetylcholine, which are somewhat interconnected through the use of caffeine. Caffeine blocks the adenosine receptors and thus promotes wakefulness. And caffeine is also known to promote and modulate acetylcholine release. And then in chapter three of part two, we're going to discuss dopamine, epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, norepinephrine, also known as noradrenaline, glutamate and histamine, which are somewhat interconnected and have relevancy because they all regulate wakefulness and alertness and contribute to mood and motivation. And then in chapter four, the final part of part two, <laughs> we're going to discuss serotonin at length in depth and then how to stack all of these over-the-counter supplements together in the entrepreneur neurotransmission stack. So stay tuned for consecutive chapters. I'll release one every single week throughout December, so you don't have to wait too long for part two to finish. As soon as these chapters are done, I'll link them down below in the description section, and I'll link them at the end of every single video of this part two for the next chapter in this video series. Sorry for the delay, but again, every single week it will be a chapter of part two of the Entrepreneur Nootropic Deep Dive video series. And then that gives me some time to start preparing for part three, four, and maybe even five, if we get to that part, which might or might not have to be cut up into different chapters as well, right? We're going to go deep and hard 
when it comes to entrepreneurship and everything that we can do to optimize it. Um, but every single week, you can basically expect how to take your entrepreneurship to the next level in a video format. I'll link all of the African supplements which we're discussing in this video series down below in case you want to order some preemptively before we get to chapter four, where I teach you guys how to stack all of these together. Again, I would advise you guys to wait, but if you can't wait, you're on the edge of your seat. The discount codes and links are down below. Look into some of my other sponsors and affiliates. All of the links and discount codes are in the description section as well. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Vigor Steve. Vigorous crew, you guys know to do a front double bicep for you guys, enhanced with neurotransmitter aids to the max. That's why I can pump out these videos like no tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in chapter two, three, and four, dropping every single week. Peace out.